Kara Shalom. Thank you for joining the Bible Journey. We are in Season 1, Episode 4 today. The reading will be Genesis 3. We are going to discuss verses 8 to 13 today. In case you missed the discussion on Chapter 3, verses 1 to 7, you can find the link at the top and in the description below. So far in our journey through Genesis, we have learned about God's creation and how it was all done in six days. Genesis 2 gives us a more detailed account of the creation of Adam and Eve. In chapter 3, we are learning about the first sin. Eve was deceived by the serpent and Adam did nothing to stop her from sinning. In fact, he willfully sinned with her. Let's read chapter 3. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, it was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth, and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life, you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains. 
by the sweat of your brow will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made for you were made from dust and to dust you will return then the man adam named his wife eve because she would be the mother of all who live and the lord god made clothing from animal skins for adam and his wife then the lord god said look the human beings have become like us knowing both good and evil what if they reach out take the fruit from the tree of life and eat it then they'll live forever so the lord god banished them from the garden of eden and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending him out, the Lord God stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the Tree of Life. When I started this journey, I said that the Bible reads like a whodunit. There are so many incidents where we can only scratch our heads and say, seriously? Sometimes we have to dig a lot deeper to find out what really happened. And sometimes we have the privilege of hindsight and we can see where things went wrong and who was to blame. In verse 8, the first part, we read, when the cool breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. This was probably during the early evening. The Garden of Eden was located somewhere in the Middle East, according to tradition, although no one really knows the exact location. The temperature can get really high there, so the only time that a cool breeze would be blowing would be in the early evening. God walked in the garden. It seems that God had regular fellowship with Adam and Eve. He talked to them and he visited where they lived. There was a relationship between man and God from the beginning. In the second part of verse 8, we read, So they hid from the Lord God in the trees. Why would they hide? They were used to seeing God and talking to him. Why would they suddenly hide? They had become aware of their nakedness. And this nakedness is not only bodily, it's also spiritual. They have lost their innocence. They became aware that they had done something terribly wrong. They thought that hiding from God would be the best thing to do. Then in verse 9 we read, Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? God knew exactly where Adam was. He knows everything. He also knew what had happened and why they were hiding. So, why does it seem that God doesn't know where Adam is? He knows. God wants to give Adam the opportunity to come clean with what they have done. Remember, we were given a free will. They could choose to own up, confess, and be done with it, or they could sin even more. God asks this question to show Adam that he still cares, that he wants to talk to us, even if we hide and see ourselves as naked before him. So in verse 10 we see, He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. This is the first time that we hear of someone being afraid of God. Adam was afraid because he knew 
that he had done something horrible. Even though they have made their fig leaf coverings, they could not escape their nakedness, their sense of shame and embarrassment at what they have done, at their disobedience, will stay with them forever. In verse 11, God speaks. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asks. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? God is asking again. Again, he is giving Adam a chance to confess his sin. God does not seem to be fighting with Adam. It seems more like he is saddened by what Adam had done. God is approaching Adam with patience, with heartfelt sorrow and with care. In the way that he simply questions Adam, we can see that even in our darkest moments, we can wait upon the Lord and he will come to us. God gives Adam the opportunity to say, yes, I did wrong, I ate from the tree, I am sorry. But Adam doesn't. Look at his reply. Verse 12. The man replied, it is the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit and I ate it. Notice the contrast here. God comes with gentle, probing questions, trying to get Adam to confess freely as to what he had done. Adam's response? He accuses God. Look how he replies, the woman you gave me. Adam not only blames Eve, he blames God for making Eve. The fact that he followed her in the act of disobedience, does not even enter his mind. He admits that he ate the fruit, but he doesn't say he's sorry. He doesn't confess it as sin. Instead, he accuses God. Maybe he saw that Eve didn't die. So in his mind, undoubtedly fueled by Satan, God lied. What he did not understand was that the death God had warned them about was not only a physical death, but a spiritual death. In our bodies, the dying process began with the sin of Adam and Eve, and the potential for spiritual death has now also entered into the equation. Let's look at verse 13. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What have you done? God asks Eve to explain herself, basically giving her the opportunity to confess as well. You can almost feel God's sorrow in this question. He gave them everything and she went and condemned the whole world in one action. She kind of shifts the blame as well. She blames the serpent for deceiving her, but it's actually more a case of her having allowed herself to be deceived. She got into a discussion with the devil and allowed him to deceive her. James 4 verse 7 says, So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Fair enough, at the time, she didn't know that. But Adam knew that she was doing something wrong. And God is going to hold him accountable in the next few verses. In episode 5, if God is willing, we will look at Genesis 3 verses 14 to 19. We will take a look at the curses or oracles that God spoke over Adam and Eve and how the snake became the lowest animal in the kingdom. Thank you so much for joining me today. May you always be blessed. Vaya con Dios.